Hello and welcome to One Shots, the comic book review show that covers some of our favorite books. My name is Javier Ortiz and today we're going to be taking a look at a crossover that I've been looking forward to, Justice League and Power Rangers. So Justice League Power Rangers number one, a great way to kick off 2017. Uh, it's written by Tom Taylor, who if you don't know, he wrote the Injustice series, which was based off the Injustice video game that was made a few years ago. A fun game, but a really great storyline in comics, uh, based off of you know Superman pretty much taking over the planet when and Lois Lane was killed by Joker, he kind of goes crazy, and Batman tries to stop him. It's a great story, uh, really well done. Tom Taylor was a great writer, and now he's doing this Power Rangers uh, Just League crossover, which, the first issue is really good. Uh, some great points. Uh, it starts out dark, it turns light, but you know goes back to that darkness. A great balance of DC and, and Boom Studios with the Power Rangers style. And the artwork is done by Steven Byrne, who is a really good artist. Uh, this issue, not much to complain about. Uh, Superman, there, there's one issue. Uh, Superman has these iron wrist things that he's wearing when you first see him. Uh, not really sure why, because the rest of his outfit is very much in the typical Superman look, but those iron wrist things, I'm not really sure why they're there. It, it might be explained in a future issue. Maybe it's something to do with uh, you know, the Power Rangers coming over, who knows. Uh, but right now, it just seemed kind of off. Uh, you also see glimpses of The Flash and Batman, who, you know, they both look good. Uh, Batman is sporting that new look from Rebirth, where he's got the gold trim on the Bat logo. Looks really good, and, and the artwork is done very much in the essence of uh, the Boom Studios Power Ranger style. Really nice to look at. Now, a quick recap of Just League Power Rangers. Basically, it starts out with uh, Zordon calls the Rangers uh, to find Alpha because he's gone missing. Uh, Zack goes out, looks for him, uh, as well as all the Rangers. Zack finds him, and he brings him back to the command center. And there's something wrong with Alpha. He's kind of like melting. It's kind of weird. All of a sudden, Zordon's like, wait, that's not Alpha. And he blows up. It's crazy. A Power Rangers story starting out with like an attack in their command center and home base. It hit very very much like a dark, gritty style where, you know, I wouldn't really necessarily uh, expect that from Power Rangers story uh, with an explosion to start out with. So Alpha blows up. Turns out that it's a, it's a robot that was created by Lord Zed because Lord Zed appears with his putties. Zack tries to stop them, but he's already hurt from the explosion. And so he, he figures he can't fight them. So what he'll do is he'll teleport them out of there. So Zack grabs Lord Zed and he's about to teleport him away. And when he does, Zordon recognizes that there's something wrong with his uh, teleporter. Uh, it was damaged in the explosion. So in uh, like mid teleportation, like they're in kind of like a tube of like, I guess cross dimensions or whatever. He lets go of Zed and when Zack lands, he's in a different place altogether, but the putties are still there following him. So he fights them off with his, you know, his power ax, really cool weapon. Uh, he's fighting them off and all of a sudden Batman appears and he's like, listen son, you gotta put the weapon down or you know, I'm gonna have to stop you. All, and Zack thinks that Batman is a uh, one of Zed's monsters. So he starts to fight Batman. Batman, you know, in his batman s can counter everything. He's He disarms Zack, gets him on the ground. He's like, listen, you're disoriented, something's wrong. Tell me what's going on. All of a sudden, the rest of the Rangers appear, and they start to just beat up on Batman. Like, he's taking shots from the Red Ranger, Green Ranger, Blue Ranger, Pink Ranger, everyone's fighting him. And it's really funny because as he's fighting them off, because, you know, obviously Batman can hold his own, only so much though with enhanced beings, uh, kind of like the metahumans he fights regularly. But he's throwing batarangs at them, he's trying to fight them off, and all of a sudden you see him talking in his ear like, listen, I need help, uh, I'm fighting enhanced individuals with uh, enhanced durability, enhanced speed. And there's one moment where he gets kicked by the Green Ranger and he's like, an enhanced strength. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a cool panel of all the rangers with their power weapons uh, about to fight him. And cause you know, they're like, listen, you try to hurt our friend Zack, He's saying you're a monster of Zeds. We're gonna stop you. All of a sudden, they're there with their weapons. Next panel, they're all gone. And you see the Flash with all their weapons kind of tossing them aside. It's a, it's a really cool moment, uh, just because you're like, oh wow, you know, it's the Justice League and the Power Rangers are interacting. Uh, so in mid-fight, uh, Batman retreats his Batmobile to kind of fight them off. And all of a sudden, Kimberly pulls out the, the, the pink pterodactyl I guess the Zords uh, cross dimensions as well, along with the Power Rangers, not really explained, but it's whatever, it's one of those things you don't really need to explain. All of a sudden, she's, she grabs the Batmobile by the pink pterodactyl and starts flying away, and Flash is reporting back to the Watchtower to Cyborg saying, listen, we need help because Batman was just taken by a pink pterodactyl robot, and that's how, the, that's how it ends. 
It's a really interesting story and it's really interesting to see where it's going to go and how they're going to, you know, cooperate with each other and if the fighting will still last because interestingly enough, like I said at the beginning, it starts out pretty dark, not only with that explosion, but at the very beginning of the issue, we see Angel Grove is just a wasteland. There's just a giant hole, kind of like a like a Hiroshima kind of thing. Uh, there's nothing. It's a wasteland. And Superman is talking to Zack saying, it's not your fault, son. And it says, you know, 36 hours beforehand. And then we go back to Zordon calling the Rangers. So really interesting to see is where's this going to go? What's going to happen to Angel Grove? How does that happen? And why didn't the Justice League help? And why is Superman saying it's not Zack's fault? You know, it, there's a lot of cool cliffhangers left. And overall, in this issue, uh, really cool writing, great writing done by Tom Taylor, because he, it's interesting to see what's going to happen next. You know, like what happens to Angel Grove? What happens to Batman? Well, how do the Rangers interact with Justice League? Is Justice League going to try and stop them? It's really interesting to see where it's going and, and how exactly Lord Zed is involved with all this because he was teleported with Zack as well. It's just he didn't land at Gotham. So where did he land? That's what I wonder. Okay, so overall a great first issue for a crossover that I've personally been looking forward to. Again, a great way to kick off the new year with Just League and Power Rangers crossing over as one. What happened to Alpha? What happened to Angel Grove? Why does Zack feel responsible? Where is Kimberly taking Batman? All these questions left unanswered and I'm really curious to find out what happens. Let me know what you guys think is going to happen in the comments below. And if you like this comic book review, be sure to like, favor, and subscribe to that hashtag show to stay up to date with everything trending in geek pop culture.